The first step in DTI analysis is similar to what we do in any sort of fMRI analysis, and that is we try to correct for any sort of distortions or any kind of motion that went on. Right? So there are some analogs to DTI analysis that we see in uh, fMRI analysis, if you're familiar with that. So, for example, in fMRI data, uh, sometimes we acquire what's called a field map, and this gives us a sense of where there might be distortions in the magnetic field. And if we have those, then we can basically take the reverse of that and try to subtract that out from the image to get rid of all that distortion. So this first step that we're going to do here is called top-up. Uh, it's, from what I can tell in the latest version of FSL, it's still only a command line tool. It's not available through the graphical user interface, but that might change soon. So uh, we're going to be using that to essentially get rid of any sort of distortions that happened when we were acquiring a DTI data set. So let's take a look at the data that we have. Uh, right now I'm using the FSL tutorial data. I've downloaded it. It's in this file path. We're in FDT1 slash subject1 underscore preproc. So what we have in here, we have uh, BVALs, BVEX, that's just uh, the stuff you'll need to do your DTI analysis. We also have the diffusion weighted data set and this thing called ACK params. Okay, so just briefly to just look at ACK params, this gives you a couple of rows and uh, this number right here in the second column that tells you whether this was uh, acquired in the anterior to posterior direction, the posterior to anterior, and this last column is the readout time from the first echo to the last echo. So not to get too technical, it's just something you'll need from your scanner technician about when this, uh, when this scan was acquired to get a sense of how to unwarp these uh, distortions when you apply top up. So the first thing that we want to do, and also notice that we have a couple of things here. We have the diffusion weighted data set. We also have this no difference posterior to anterior acquired data set, right? So we want both the posterior to anterior acquired data set and the anterior to posterior acquired data set. So how do we get that other one? Well, we're going to use this thing called FSL ROI to basically extract the first frame or the first image of our DWI data set. Okay, so I'm going to extract it from DWI data. This is also called no diff. It's basically our reference volume. And we're extracting it from the very first image of that data set. Once we have those, we're going to merge those together using FSL merge. And we're going to call this a anterior to posterior underscore posterior to anterior uh, B naught, which is essentially our reference image. And we're going to combine no diff and no diff in the other encoding direction. So before we go on, let's just take a brief look at what those two images look like. So if we load up, let's say, just the, the no diff data set, if you just look around this, if you have a pretty good idea about what functional images should look like, uh, some of this stuff may appear a little squashed or elongated in certain places, especially in the very posterior and the very anterior parts of the brain. We can add our no diff PA, and we can toggle between the two by double clicking on this I icon right here. And you'll notice that between the two, there does seem to be a lot of variability. Essentially, both of these give different information about susceptibility artifacts during the DTI acquisition. And we're going to try to correct for those. So now that we've merged both of those into a single data set, we have what we need to run the top of to give us some estimates of where all these distortions occur. So this first command top up is just the estimation. There's also apply top up, which is another command which will actually apply it and try to unwarp it. So top up requires a couple arguments. The image in is going to be this uh, AP PA uh, B naught image that we used to, w that was a combination of these different uh, encoding directions. And also it needs this parameter file. Okay, remember, this is something that you know comes with this tutorial data set, but it, this is something that you will need to get on your own from your scanner technician. Okay, config. This is something that will be output, I believe. I don't think it's an essential command, but it's it's what's listed in the tutorial help. And the output data set, we're going to call that uh, top up 
ABPA BO. Okay, so this thing actually takes a while. It's already been run. I just want to show you what the command actually looks like. And all this stuff is actually in this pre-baked folder. So this is it had all the top up and all the edit correction applied to the data set. So we're going to take that first just because we don't want to wait for all this uh, all this processing to take place. So we're going to take this data set of have the top up applied to it and put it up in here. So if we open up FSL view and we take these images that it have had a, a top up applied to it and have had all these distortions basically uh, mapped out, you'll see that this looks a lot like a field map which in both instances, both with the field maps in fMRI and with this, these maps that we have right here, these are estimates of the distortion across the image. Right? And so basically we're going to try to do the reverse to undo all these distortion effects to get a cleaner image. Okay, so lastly, now that we have that, we have what we need to go forward and just run the eddy correction, which is kind of like a motion correction step. But just to show you how this has affected our data, how it has corrected for some of the distortions, I'm going to run the apply top up command. So similar thing, it needs a couple of different images. So the no diff, no diff dot uh, underscore PA. And also the top up map, which is essentially an estimate of all these distortions and where they occur, okay, which is APPABO. Uh, data in, again, is the ACK params that we had before. And in index, we're going to make that uh, 1 and 2. And lastly, an output file, which will be hi-fi underscore no, no DIF. This doesn't take too long, but now, this is a step you won't usually run in your processing stream because you just need the estimates to use with another tool and you basically can just skip this step. It's not essential, but I just want to use it to highlight what this will look like after all these distortions have been corrected for. And once that is done, we can open up FSL view again. Open up this HiFi data set that we just created. And also compare that to both of those files which had not had any distortion correction yet. Okay, so if we look at that, if we just you know look at one first, this HiFi no diff, this is the corrected image after top up has been applied. Notice if, if I look at one of them, it appears a little bit elongated in certain parts of the brain. And the other one it looks a little bit squashed. This is basically taking both of those into consideration, and it's looked at this estimation of uh, discrepancies file or this estimation of distortions file and use it to correct these images. So that's a very brief overview of top up. Again, if you've done field mapping and field unwarping, it's the exact same concept. It's really the, the same thing that's going on. We're just applying it to DTI data. And we're going to use that in the next step for something called eddy correction, which is like uh, motion correction for traditional fMRI analysis. So I will see you in the next tutorial.